On today's episode of In The Know, we'll be exploring updates to shipping labels, which you can now purchase, create, and print directly from QuickBooks Online. Here's what to expect. You'll learn about the update, then hear from pro advisors Carla Caldwell and Tony Proctor. Hey, pro advisors, I'm Jacqueline, and you're watching In The Know. It's the show designed to keep you in the know on the most exciting updates to QuickBooks Online. So here's the scoop. Shipping products can be a real pain. Business owners have to enter shipping information into multiple systems, which slows down operations. So we've partnered with ShipEngine to provide users access to deeply discounted carrier rates directly in QuickBooks Online. Users can easily compare shipping rates across carriers and service options. They can purchase, create, and print shipping labels from an invoice and pre-populate the ship to and ship from information and they can track and manage their shipment status from within the invoice. And now for the fast facts. Shipping labels are available to all US-based QuickBooks Online users on Simple Start, Essentials, Plus, and Advanced as of July, 2024. To access this feature, start by turning your shipping settings to on, then navigate to the Commerce tab in the left-hand nav. If you find this update interesting or helpful, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll turn now to Keith, an Intuit product leader, for a deep dive demo. Keith, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Jacqueline. Uh, excited to be back, and I'm really excited to share everything we've done uh, on a completely brand new feature for shipping uh, directly within QBO. Um, so the first thing that we're going to go into when we look at uh, shipping here and what we've launched is, again, we've partnered uh, with ShipEngine uh, to give shipping rates directly within QBO and the ability to buy, print, and actually get your shipping done without ever having to leave your QuickBooks account. So first thing your clients are going to have to do is create a Ship Engine account. Now we've embedded this experience that it's directly within your QBO account. Um, they will go through and fund their wallet and add some funds so they can actually purchase these shipping labels. And this will give them access to a Ship Engine account, uh, which gives them deeply discounted rates on carriers like USPS. They can add additional carriers. They can go and add existing wallets for a FedEx or UPS account or other carriers they use um, without, again, ever having to leave QBO and log into different systems. So first thing uh, your clients are going to do when they're going in and selecting a carrier is they're going to have the ability to select the carrier, the shipping speed, and actually buy and print these labels. All of this is directly done um, from within the invoice itself. The only thing the user has to do is enter a few package dimensions. They are going to compare all the multiple different shipping rates that are available based on where they're shipping from, where they're shipping to, find the best rate that works for them, purchase the label, and then they have a label tracking number and all of that directly tied back to the invoice itself that they are already creating inside of QBO. So when we go into uh, the demo here, I'll show you a few of the different touch points that we have for where you can access the shipping feature. Now, the first thing you'll notice in the global create is that you can create shipping labels and you can actually select an existing invoice from here. It'll pre-populate all your information and you can find that same information in the commerce tab under the shipping section. You select existing invoices, it'll pre-populate all the information of where it's shipping from and where it's shipping to. And then the last area, if you're going directly to an invoice itself, you actually have all this information already on the invoice. So at the bottom here, you'll see that you can print shipping label. Now, what the user has to do is enter in some package dimensions, the length, the width, the weight of the package. The information that's already pre-populated is the where it's shipping from, where it's shipping to. This will then go and actually fetch live rates from all of these carriers, compare the different methods that are available and give you the best options. They select this, they review their shipping label, they select they wanna print it. The invoice is gonna get updated actually with the tracking number. And now what they're gonna be left with is a USPS label that they can print out, affix to their package, and they can go and get USPS to pick up that package and get it delivered for their customers. So with all of these updates, we're really trying to improve the efficiency of shipping, get packages shipped out to their customers faster, and reduce the operating cost of buying and printing labels that these businesses undergo daily. Um, so with all those updates, really excited to launch uh, shipping and I will pass it back over to you, Jacqueline. Uh, thank you again for having me. That's fantastic. Keith, thank you so much for the demo. 
We'll turn now to Carla Caldwell and Tony Proctor, our pro advisor correspondents, for them to weigh in. Well, Carla, Tony, thank you so much for hanging out with us on the show. It's great to have you here. Absolutely. Love it. Hey, it's great to be here. Well, we're talking about updates to shipping labels, which I know is sort of a niche or nitty gritty thing to talk to clients about. But if we zoom out and think about advising them on their operations or how they're managing their OPEX, that's what I'd love to talk to you about. And Carla, let me start with you. I'd love to get your point of view on how do you enter into a conversation with their client, with your clients on their overall operations and advising them on that? Well, I always say that I'm, I'm kind of getting involved in this client in a way where I'm not just trying to get out information for a tax return or a financial. We really want their operations to be efficient and effective and honestly, just save them time. So when I approach it that way from the get go in our very first conversation, it just feels very natural to be recommending things to them and asking things. Um, sometimes I tell the clients, I'm probably going to feel like I'm, I'm asking you really personal questions that maybe they're, you know, somebody else hasn't asked them before, but I'm like, well, how do you do this? And, you know, if anybody's ever seen me in any trainings that I've ever done before, they know that if somebody tells me they write checks, I'm immediately have this visceral response. So they're not overly shocked when I say, what are you doing about this or that? So we really want to help them with their operations. Now, I don't want to get in all the weeds of it, but we definitely like to just help them understand there's a better way to do things. So for us, it's just from the first of our conversations, it's all about, hey, we we're here to help. And we really want to partner with our clients on, you know, making their businesses better and grow. So that, that's kind of how we do it. So Carla, you brought up a really good point about where do you draw the line as an advisor? Where does your role begin and end relative to what your client is doing? Tony, how do you set those boundaries when you work with clients? It's really, it's, it's conversation. And, you know, we, we are going to get, all up in your business is what I like to say. Um, <laughs> but it's the the more information that you are able to provide to us, the better of options and things that we can provide to you. I mean, it's obviously we're not the same as the attorney, but when we have those conversations behind closed doors, it 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 may seem a little invasive, but the goal is, hey, let's let's drive forward. And so just setting those parameters up front, like, hey, I'm going to ask you some things. I'm getting in your business. It's not going to leave this room, but it's going to help you in the long run. So, I mean, I think communication, just setting it out the gate. This is why we're doing it. Um, not because we're nosy, not all the way, but we ultimately want to help you out. <laughs> I love that you say it, not always. That's that's great because I'm like, eh, sometimes I'm just curious. Like some of our clients are fascinating. I like to know about what's going on in their business. So I, I want to know. But yeah, sometimes I have to be careful. <laughs> Tony, specific to a client's operations, are there specific probing questions that you find yourself asking that have been good unlocks? Why? Um, mm -hmm. So it's probably even at, like someone's writing checks and it's like, okay, it's 2024. Like, why are you doing that? And it's not why, like, why you big dummy, but it's more like, why is that? Help me to understand the reason behind it um, because there may be a better way. And so it's it's almost like anyone that has children or just co-workers that are nosy is why why and, and the reason is because we want to know more to help you out so that's yeah. that's my favorite question why yeah i've i've told one of my clients in particular because they would do things and then i would find out about it later and i'm like it takes me four times as long to unravel this so i will tell them a lot of times and it takes time to build trust in any relationship right and so when we talk to our clients, I tell them, I want you to tell me about the messes. I want you to tell me about the weird things that are going on because I want to get you to the yes, but I want to get you there in the right way. And so I, it's not like you're not allowed to do that. I, I don't want to tell the client that, although, you know, obviously there's times we have to do that. But I'm like, if you tell me what the situation is, then we can think through that together and probably come up with a yes. And if I need to pull in a colleague or something like that, we'll do that. But I, I want them to understand that we're somebody that wants to have those questions because we're going to come up with solutions to work for them. And sometimes, you know, that, that works. Sometimes I'm like, man, this is, I'm like, you've stumped me, you know, but most of the time we can get them an answer. We can talk about apps. I reach out to our community or whatever. I, I really want to partner with our clients. And when we approach it that way, 
like Tony, you just said, when we ask why, they don't think, gosh, she's nosy. They're like, oh, Carla wants to understand. So I've got to backtrack a little bit more of this and then she'll get me to where we want to go. They do feel that when we really help them understand we're partnering with them and not just like, you can't do that and you can't do that. You know, they're they're better about it when we when we really yeah. work with them um, and come up with that. Yeah. Now, Carla, you mentioned that you do have some inventory based clients. Are there and I know that that's quite nuanced as compared to working with clients who are in professional services when it comes to their operations. Are there any big wins that you've had in terms of helping to guide them on their operations or maintaining costs or keeping costs down? Yeah. I mean, one of the big things that I always want them to understand is what is their cost of goods sold? And that seems like such a simple thing. I mean, if they buy something and resell it, I bought 10 widgets at a dollar a piece. I know what my cost of goods sold is. But sometimes it, it's a little bit more complicated than that because they have different shipping um, expenses that come at a different time and so on. So there, there can be some complications. The big thing that I tell my clients is that I want to make sure you understand what's going on in your business. And so when we sit down and look at a financial statement, if they don't understand it, then that's a problem that we need to help them with. So what my big wins are is, is asking those why questions, asking those things about, well, why are we doing it this way? How is this working? Um, just recently, we have a client that actually does wholesale and manufacturing. And so we've had a lot of deep conversations about what they're doing and why they're doing it, how they're doing it. And they're telling when I started working with them a few years ago, they were doing spreadsheets for everything. Well, I love some Excel, but that's not how you run an inventory and that's not how you run accounting. Right. And so I was like, OK, I don't want to maintain the spreadsheet. I didn't want to see the spreadsheet. I was like, there are systems out there that can handle this for you. And they're like, well, we don't know what those are. And I'm like, OK, great. We will get some and set up some demos. I don't know their details of what they need to do or how they do certain things. My job is to just tee up the information. They know their business really well. It also really helps when I do that, because then I tell them my expertise is your accounting system. Don't you mess with that. That's my world. And you do your stuff over there. And that helps them see the difference with where I'm going to be and where they're going to be. So I'm like, I will work on integrating that. I will work on getting the information out of it that I need. But this is your domain. And I don't want to make that decision for them. But I can tee up that stuff. So that's where uh, we work with our clients in inventory. Carla, that was absolutely quotable. This is my world. <laughs> and that's yours. That's amazing. That's right. Yeah, don't mess with my world. <laughs> no. <laughs> Well, Carla, Tony, thanks so much for joining this episode of In the Know. Such yeah. poignant insights. And I just love that nugget of always go back to the why. Yeah. Absolutely. yeah. Absolutely. Well, thank you. And we'll catch you thank next you. time. Carla, Tony, awesome. bye. Bye. And thank you for watching this episode. I'm Jacqueline, the host of In the Know and leader of Pro Advisor Training and Certification. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe so that you don't miss a single episode. We'll catch you next time.